All right. So just to, to recognize, I'm sure some people are going to be let in late, but um, so I'm Randy Morris and I'm the Santa Cruz County Human Services Director. And I want to make sure to disclose that this um, is being recorded um, and this will be posted. So if you miss anything or you need to tell your staff or colleagues that missed this, uh, you could watch this later. Um, want to formally welcome everybody. Um, this is a partnership with Santa Cruz County. Um, Human Services Department is the sort of host of this for reasons I'll describe in a minute, but I also want to recognize the city of Santa Cruz is here and our colleague Tiffany. Hello, Tiffany. And a few analysts turnover, but I know many know Tiffany. Um, and also uh, our consultant colleagues, um, Nicole and Nicole. So sort of our, the three of us are sort of co-try hosting this and want to welcome you. This is the uh, CORE RFP, Ac lots of acronyms in there. We'll talk about that in a minute, but um, CORE will say later, but RFP request for proposal, the kickoff of the public procurement of uh, county and city general fund money. Um, I'm going to do some welcoming remarks. Um, and kind of do a little bit of framing. I'm aware of probably a majority of people on this call have a lot of history and know this, so apologize in advance for the repeat, but I'm also aware, you know, part of what we're trying to accomplish is to level the playing field and create opportunities for uh, any service provider in the community to apply for this. So I wanna take a minute to kind of level set. And when I turn it over to, um, uh, other county human services staff, um, you, you will have a more formal presentation, a PowerPoint, um, and this is also a, an opportunity to have some question and answer, which is a part of a formal bidders conference, but I want to use the moment to underline how important this is. Um, this is not your only opportunity for question and answer. And um, I just want to sort of make sure people know, though there's going to be a moment through this thing called a Padlet. Um, there's also the chat here. Um, you will put questions in. We're going to keep track of all of them. We are going to attempt to answer whichever ones we can today, but we're recording all of them that show up in the tablet, that show up in um, the chat, and you will hear in the formal presentation, if you haven't read the materials, there's also an open um, email address that throughout the open question and answer period, we're going to answer. So I just want to make sure if we don't get to your question and answer, you didn't miss the moment. So there's no secret doorway if you post your question in the right place in the right way, we'll answer that and all the others will be missed. So I just want to underline that. Um, so CORE, what is it? It's an acronym, and um, I'm uh, new-ish to this community. I started one month before the pandemic, and I was told, um, oh, get ready when this CORE thing comes up, because there's a whole history here. But I've really enjoyed the last six months sort of diving in and realizing this community um, between the city and the county it takes a pretty meaningful amount of general fund money and um, puts it out to the community to deliver services through community-based organizations. It's uh, for sure not enough money, but uh, looking around the state of California, it's a lot more money than some communities put into um, the community to help. Uh, so I think it's um, a really interesting opportunity. And I want to take a few minutes um, to share from my perspective sort of what is core, at least as it relates to um, the bidders conference today. So, you know, some on this call um, and everyone on this call have some perspective, um, varying degrees, and some have a whole long history, which goes back over three decades of, um, and I'll speak just a little county centric, um, the county for over three decades has put general fund money out to the community in a program that was called community programs. But the way in which the elected officials decided how and in what way that money should be put out into contracts in the community was done through the open end of the year budget hearings. Um, and I don't know how elected officials made decisions in budget hearings when they have a million things to deal with and then have this general fund money where they got to hear arguments and recommendations and have public dialogue. And so that happened for many, many decades, um, well before my time. Um, why the County Human Services Department comes into this, one of many county departments, is once the board did their deliberations and decided which money to go to which community-based organizations, that direction was then given to the Human Services Department that had a very narrow role, which was just to turn around those contracts as directed by the board. But that was the limits of our role. Um, you know, six to seven years ago, uh, the board started having conversations about changing that process. And that led to the precursor of, um, you know, this moment we're in today, which is five years ago after board deliberation, I think it took two years of votes to shift from what it was to what it is today. 
the board directed the county human services department to do a few things. And number one was to look to see if there was other funders of like programs. And that led to the city of Santa Cruz agreeing to partner with us, but we worked with all cities to have this conversation and, and, and other organizations to um, shift from the way the process that was to an actual competitive procurement, which is formally called a uh, request for proposal where money is put out, people apply, there's a review process, and then those recommended awards are brought to the board. And it sort of creates a layer between that um, public board hearing and um, the final decision through this RFP process. Um, so they, they directed the county to uh, start a competitive procur procurement. They directed us to look for other funders to align our work, and that led to the city. Um, they also directed us to ensure that we wove into the process um, uh, sort of an scope of work that involved uh, results and delivery on a scope of work that um, produced certain outcomes. And because um, there was no real framework to shift from the public meetings and the um, recommendations and the advocacy that played out in those meetings, there needed to be something to build this concept up upon. So the direction ended up being to look at the uh, a number of existing strategic plans that were in place in the community. And those strategic plans kind of were the underpinnings of that first RFP, which led to um, the first round of awards that exist today. And those were put in place um, five years ago. Want to let everybody know, if you don't know, um, for those who have contracts, you know this, um, the original term of the contracts were three years. Um, but then in the middle of that third year, the county adopted a two-year budget cycle and the core was off cycle, so they extended it a year. And then this thing called the pandemic hit, <laughs> so they extended it another year. So here we are five years later, which was never the original intent. Um, so this is the second ever RFP of a process that, and I share that 30-year history because I'm very mindful we're sort of in our infancy if you look at that history. Uh, and there was a number of lessons learned. I've been in a few meetings with community-based providers, um, a number this summer. Um, I think there's a lot of thoughts and feelings and ideas and even some frustrations with how the first round went. And there has been a lot of intent to build upon those lessons learned to develop what you're gonna hear about today. Um, a number of things have changed since the first one. I wanna do a quick summary. Um, first is uh, we shifted from using the strategic plan model to what is now called the core conditions of well-being framework. Um, all of this information has been shared over the summer. It's all posted on our website. I'm not going to go through that detail, but um, just want to let you know that was a pretty big shift. So that's the framework that you'll hear about in the presentation today. Um, in the last six months, we've been really picking up the conversations that we've been um, shifting from what had been over the last many years, sort of um, existing community meetings. Um, our consultant colleagues, Nicole and Nicole, have been having coffee chats and a steering committee, and there's been public presentations twice a year. But in the last six months, we really shifted to gearing up for this um, next round of competitive pr procurement. And that really kicked off in the spring of last year where we gave a presentation to the board and we gave an outline of the timeframes that are playing out. And we're in the middle of that timeline right now. And then specifically, and the point I want to raise today is because we as the county um, wanted to develop a process that hopefully was agreeable to the community and ultimately to the board and to the city, to the city council, um, we really endeavored to create a collaborative conversation over the summer and we had a number of meetings, um, a number of uh, open conversations, a lot of survey monkeys. And throughout these processes, what is in front of you today, this RFP, is the byproduct of our best thinking of county staff, feedback from our elected officials at the city and the county, and these conversations that we had with you, because we want to build something that makes sense to everybody, us as funders, you as service providers. So um, this all led to November 9th. There was a morning presentation to the Board of Supervisors um, that I provided as the Human Service Director. And then in the afternoon, um, the city gave a presentation to their city council and both bodies approved the release of this RFP that got posted and you're going you're gonna to hear about today. So I want to sort of end my talk, my opening and welcoming with sort of what I'm hoping I see plays out over the next six months, because here we are in December, which is amazing, or I guess seven months. Um, this is all the beginning of a process that leads to a new set of contracts going in place. Um, 
July 1st, the beginning of next fiscal year. Um, this is, you know, a really interesting process. I, I've been a manager in human services for over 20 years. I've overseen over two dozen procurements, um, but I'm new to this community, and this is a really fascinating procurement. <laughs> we have, you know, over $5 million of money, but we probably have $100 million of unmet need out there. And so how do we come up with a process that helps our elected officials agree with ha how to target money when there is so much unmet need out there? And it's an interesting complicated um, conversation. And so we're going to learn from this experience. And then when we do this again in three years, we'll apply any lessons learned that play out today. But my hope is that as staff, that the worst uh, outcome is people are disappointed about who got awards, but they feel confident that this process had integrity that we did our absolute best to have a fair process. There were no games. There was no secret behind the door discussions. This was truly a public system that had public dollars that are put out to bid. And the process is very clear and very open. And at the end of the day, when we're in front of the board at the end of June and they adopt the budget and they approve the contracts, that at least everybody feels like the process was fair. I'm, I'm, I've am I'm, heard, I've listened. People did not feel like the first round necessarily was as clean as they thought. And so we are doing our best to bring a lot of integrity to the process. Process. Um, you're going to hear in the formal presentation um, the timelines. You're going to hear that there's a number of opportunities to ask questions. You're going to hear about the efforts we're going to put in place to answer those questions. And you're going to hear about TA and support that we have in place between now and the time the applications are due. And again, that is all part of our effort to make sure the playing field is level and um, everybody has a fair opportunity to um, compete for and be awarded this money. Um, the next upcoming uh, moments that involve me as the human services director is we have uh, three public moments in front of us. Um, in March, there will be a presentation to the board in the morning, the dates to be determined, but we anticipate it'll be early March. Um, and then in the afternoon, a presentation to the city council. That date is intentionally after all applications are in but before the rating panels submit their rankings and recommendations. Um, the reason for that is back to integrity. We want to make sure to have another public moment for community-based organizations to talk publicly in public comment and for us as staff to provide an update on where we are and kind of in the process. Then in May, you'll hear this um, in the details of the RFP, it's outlined in the materials. We go to the board and the city goes to the council to say, here is the recommended awards. And that initiates an, an appeal process. Public procurement requires an opportunity for applicants to file an appeal if you disagree. I don't think people appeal if you get the award, <laughs> but if people do not get an award, you have an opportunity, a right um, to file an appeal. Um, and then I want to um, offer full disclosure back to the issue of integrity. The first level appeal is county staff. And then the final level appeal is the final moment, and that is the June budget hearings. And that is when the board and the city council ultimately make final decisions if there's any appeals or disagreements. And then that's when the awards go into place. My role as county human services director is a partner to the county general services department director is we are the first level of staff appeal. General service reviews to see if there's any technical mistakes that were made in the process in public procurement. And my role is more as a pro program lead. And because of that, um, I want to share for people who've been on these calls um, or watched the video archives of them, um, I've been very active in a lead voice from the county end of what we do. But to make sure that I remove myself from having any role on dialogue with community-based organizations who are going to apply or um, anybody having a perception that I'm you know, unfairly connected to some organization over another, I'm going to pull myself out of this process. Um, in fact, I'm going to log off after my introductory remarks. Um, I will be very involved behind the curtain as um, county kind of working the process, but I'm going to be completely removed from the application process. I will not see any applications. I will not be in any conversation with rating panels. I want to be consulted on anything. Um, people can submit Public Records Act requests to make sure to confirm that I won't have any role because if there is an appeal, I want to make sure that I have no knowledge about anything. Um, that has played out so I can be a fresh set of eyes on any particular applicant that's appealed. Um, the final comment I want to make is I want to recognize um, 
something that strikes me is very, very interesting, which is core, the acronym, the first letter C is a collective impact. And the directive from the board was try to get as many funders together as possible to pool our money so that we could have the deepest impact possible. Today, we have a partnership that's shared with the city of Santa Cruz, but there's other cities that um, fund. And there's also two other entities that I mentioned at the last presentation um, in November to the board. So I want to provide a brief um, uh, update on where that is for the purpose of that's not going to be discussed today and want to say why. There are two other funders that also have open applications and open portals, um, and that is the older Americans Act, Federal Action, California Department of Aging, local area agency on aging run through what's called the Seniors Council. They put out money. I ran that program in my former jurisdiction. Here it's a nonprofit Seniors Council. There are organizations who currently have contracts from the AAA and from CORE, and there are likely organizations who are going to apply for AAA and CORE. So I just want to recognize that that was shared at the board, that both of those portals are open. And then the other is the Community Foundation. Um, we were actually directed by the board in the city to see if we could partner with them. Um, during the pandemic, there was a lot of shared um, emergency pandemic money that was given to the Community Foundation, a lot of partnership. So those two organizations also have open um, processes right now. And as community-based organizations, I anticipate some of you might be applying to all three. So I just want to recognize that when we say collective impact in an ideal world, all of this would be organized and aligned and integrated, but today it's not. <laughs> so we are not going to be talking about the AAA as RFP. We don't have a role in that. Um, we are not going to speak to the Community Foundation grant process, but I do want to recognize there are open conversations happening. And if there ends up being any decision to have any alignment in what we do. That will be shared publicly in March in front of the board, but today we don't have any. We just have conversations to see if there's some room for partnership. So if questions come up between now um, and March, I just wanted to disclose that we don't have any secret answers or plan. <laughs> We're just in conversation that was shared at the November presentation. Um, it's an interesting timing moment, but um, we will kind of continue to work on that. And if we can develop a, a process, we will. And if we don't, there'll be three independent processes. We will figure that out over the months ahead. So with that, um, I am going to turn it over to Shara Clinton, who is a member of the Human Services Department Leadership Team. She's the director. Sorry, Shara, if I'm embarrassing you, but I got to recognize she is the director of our planning and evaluation unit that oversees our contracts unit, amongst many other programs. And she's been lead within the county, and she's going to walk through the RFP, and she's also going to share with you in her um, overview who all is presenting from the county and our, our partners uh, as part of an agenda. So Cher, I'm gonna pass the baton to you. I'm gonna log out for the reasons I described and um, I hope uh, this is helpful to everybody. Thank you, Randy, um, for that great introduction. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what we plan to do today. And we have a couple of objectives. Um, Basically, before the end of this meeting, I'm really hoping that you'll be able to find information on our website. That's where there's a lot of links and different opportunities that we'll be telling you about to get support and also be able to walk away and have an understanding of the RFP, where to, um, where to get more detailed information, just simply how to use it as a reference guide throughout the process. We definitely also want to make sure that it is clear on how to ask questions. As Randy noted, there is no wrong doors. There is a couple of different ways that we're going to tell you about, um, but we do welcome your questions. As well as we'll want to uh, also we'll review about where you can get the information and that we will be posting um, that information about the responses on our, our website. And lastly, one, uh, one goal of today is to start um, some of the questions um, that will continue throughout the process. So we're gonna get to those goals um, with, uh, with an agenda that, thank you, Nicole, um, that you can see there. In just a second, I'm gonna hand it over to Alex Dami, who's gonna tell you about the processes of using Zoom and Padlet, as well as email to submit questions. Today, uh, we'll be using Padlet, but again, there are different ways you can submit questions. And the majority of the first part is we're gonna walk through that RFP. I'm gonna be joined by George Malakowski, who is our business analytics manager at HSD. 
and we'll kind of let you know where are where the sections be able if you are new and just opening that up it will give you a foundation and if you have looked at it before hopefully we can um, look in some areas a little bit deep deeper also our core consultants um, have joined us and they're going to tell you a little bit about the training and technical assistance opportunities which are optional, um, but you may enjoy participating in those. Then with a quick screen, uh, screen break, you can um, uh, log off your, your camera and take care of things or think about your questions as you like. And then um, from the city, Tiffany Wise West will host a time where you can orderly ask some questions or perhaps um, clarify any questions that you'll be submitting on, on Padlet. Then we'll wrap up with a few of our responses and, and the next steps. I know when I have gone to these meetings, sometimes it's a bit frustrating because we can't answer all the questions and I just ask for your patience. Um, we really truly want to be thoughtful and considerate and sometimes we'll, we're gonna have to take those questions back um, to be able to partner with the city and look at it as, as a team. But we will answer what we can today or certainly orient more to, to the document. And with that, I'm gonna ask Alex to tell you a little bit about the processes today. Hi, everybody. Um, so just real quickly, how to use Zoom. Uh, if you need to mute yourself or unmute yourself or start or stop your video, you can find those um, buttons down in the left-hand side of your screen. We also invite you all to uh, rename yourself, add your agency, or add pronouns. Uh, you can do that by clicking the participants button, finding your name, and there'll be a button that says more, uh, and then that'll lead you to a, a section where you can rename yourself. Um, there is a chat, there's a group chat, and you can also set, send private messages, um, particularly to me if you have any difficulties navigating anything on Zoom. Um, we do ask that you ask questions um, through Padlet, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, so try to keep questions onto Padlet as much as possible. And then finally, we have the reactions button. Uh, the most important feature there is the ability to raise your hand, which will be super useful when we take verbal questions at the end of today's meeting. Next slide, please, Nicole. Great, so um, this is our Padlet. Um, it is organized by um, different categories. And I'm gonna go ahead and send the link in chat right now so you guys can um, open it up uh, and take a look at it. So essentially, if you have a question during today's meeting, you're gonna click on one of those little plus buttons underneath the area that makes the most sense for you. You'll type in your question um, and then you can hit that publish button. And once the question is published, you can see that there's a little heart underneath it. So if you have a similar question or you really like that question, you can heart it. Uh, you can also add comments to other questions as well. Um, maybe you have something clarifying um, that you wanna ask. Um, so that is Padlet. Um, so feel free to access that during today's meeting. Uh, and then our Padlet board is gonna close at 5 p.m. today. So please, um, I believe Sharon mentioned it, uh, another way that you can ask questions during this RFP cycle is through email, through corefunding at santacruzcounty.us. Um, and the questions will be consolidated onto a document and posted to our webpage. So I'll go ahead and pass it back to Shara. Thanks, Alex. And I'm, I'm gonna take, take over the screen here and we're gonna start looking, um, start looking at some documents. You should be able to see the HSD uh, website at this time. And wanted to let you know that's kind of the first, um, the first stepping stone of, of looking at the RFP. We have a link on our front page that goes to core investments funding opportunities. You will see that on this page, there's just a lot of questions that you can dive in um, and see throughout the process. What is the core RFP? How do I apply? How do I uh, pose questions? How do I access technical assistance or training and sign up? So these are various pieces that you may want to, to go over and we look at over and over um, as you go through of like, oh, what was that date? Um, 
for the event. It is listed here, things like that, that you may wish to follow up. We've got emails. Um, it's just a, a great hub of information and everything on the site is aligned with what is in the RFP, which I'm gonna um, bring up next. This is the RFP document. Hey, Shara. Yes. We are still seeing the gallery view, so we're not, hmm. I'm not sure if you're sharing your screen. Thank you, um, Nicole, because I could not, um, let me just try that again. Appreciate your patience. We don't use um, Teams quite as much, and I, I seem to be having, having an issue. Are you able to see the RFP at this time? Now we see your desktop. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Um, I'm going to ask Alex to bring up, or George to bring up the RFP. Thank you for your patience. I can also bring it up, Shara, yeah, and share my screen if you want, that and then you can great. just talk me through when you want great. me to scroll. Great. Why don't we do that? Maybe the faster one at it. Um, thanks again for your patience. There we go. Thank you. One of the points I was going to make um, was that this is a learning opportunity for, for you and, and us. So this uh, was a great illustration uh, of that, is that there's going to be some learning here. Um, that's the exciting opportunity of CORE, is that we are exploring new ideas. And so again, you'll, you'll see this website that we've put together. Um, you may have already looked at it some. There's the questions that will um, guide you through the various different processes. Also, um, at the very end, you'll see some information about background. So that's where it is. Let's go ahead and start with the RFP. And you can get to it first by clicking there. Then this is the RFP document. Um, if you can take, uh, take us to the, um, the first page of the table of contents, and we'll stop there for a second. This first page of um, the table of contents really kind of shows you some of the primary elements um, in the outline. You'll see that there is a section on the core investments framework, which is the foundation um, to many of the ideas here in this RFP. Then in the third section, you'll see a funding and application approach, another um, foundational element in the RFP where you'll get information about eligibility uh, and parameters. Section four, scoring criteria. And section five will be about, is about the application process with section uh, six here on some instructions, some summary instructions about that application. Let's scroll to the next page. And what you'll see here are all these um, sections are really referenced in those first six uh, sections, all important, um, but just kind of giving you a heads up that that's the lay of the land of where you'll find information. And we'll go ahead and start with the summary. And just, um, just to echo one more thing is that you certainly, if you have questions arise, you can put them on Padlet at the moment. And I we will, um, we will um, respond to questions later. And so I'll just continue to do the review. Um, so this first page, the summary page is, your, is a typical executive summary type page. If, if you're just looking at it or a colleague might be interested, it's, it's a good one pager um, that gives the information at a glance. All of this information is further detailed in the document, but it is a nice summary of the highlights. Then we will go to the core investments framework. This, um, this section really has um, quite a bit of detail of the, of the major elements of the framework. As you'll see in that first paragraph, if you are new to, to core, that in essence, core refers to a funding model, this funding that the city and county is distributing, as well as a community movement um, that has been occurring over many years um, that is using evidence and results to achieve equitable health and well-being. The elements in this framework are outlined below, starting with one of the um, key points of, of equity, 
Uh, many of us may define equity differently. There is some discussion here. I uh, encourage you to look at um, about how equity has been discussed in core investments framework. Go ahead to the next section. Then another important concept um, or key concept, I should say, is collective impact. Core investments is a collective impact model. And if you're not um, familiar with that model, I encourage you to look at this section a bit deeper, where it talks about how collective impact is an, in, is an intentional approach about bringing people and agencies together um, to achieve that deeper social change and impact. And then another piece here is the core conditions. There is the information here, and you're, it also um, you have more information in the, that's going to be referenced in one of the um, last sections. And we're going to tell you about another place you can find information. However, here in this section, it outlines the key information you need to know about these core conditions, which in the application that we'll ask to speak to these. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down out, out in addition to these eight conditions. Um, one thing I actually I will note that all conditions, um, this funding is open to all conditions. It is a descriptor to tell us what um, you think um, are, are the needs to address here in our community. This RFP does not prioritize one above the other. Um, and you can look at that and your proposal about what need um, you plan to address. It's going to reference an online tool that um, the, uh, Nicole Young and Nicole Lesson will go deeper into in a training. Again, these are optional opportunities. However, it's a great website uh, with a lot of information, community level uh, data indicators uh, to tell about the needs. If we keep scrolling down, we get to uh, another couple of other key components that you'll see when we talk about needs. There's also what are we going to um, how do we approach them? And so there's a section on that in that online tool about outcomes, um, strategies, and their program outcomes, as well as the core continuum uh, and promising practices uh, database. The core continuum of results and evidence is found in this RFP on section three. And it is designed to illustrate the continuum of where programs or practices fall in terms of data collection, evaluation, or research. The application um, will ask you to point um, to what your proposal um, would fall into, but there is not a priority um, on, these, on this continuum. It, it does not mean that one is better than the other. It is certainly a descriptive tool um, to tell about your proposal. Another optional opportunity is there is a promising uh, practices uh, database in our community. Might be something you um, find useful uh, to see other types of programs that are similar um, to the ones that you're working in. And that wraps up the core framework um, section, which again will really be reviewed in uh, further detail in the trainings. The funding and application approach in section three is another um, kind of foundational element. And I know you're gonna wanna read through this, a little bit of detail on the eligibility and the concept of tiers that is in this RFP. In essence, this funding is given in a hybrid approach meaning the majority of funds are towards direct services over a broad base um, of types of services, core conditions, and they are grouped by size. And I'll tell you more about that, but in general, it's about um, the funding amount that you're requesting, small, medium, and large. We'll have to get some better names in the future, but it simply uh, equates to the size of the request. And then there is another, um, the smaller portion is called targeted impact tier. And that is very closely related to the collective impact uh, model. And there are a couple of different nuances that if you're interested in that tier, that you just wanna look here of kind of things that we're pulling out uh, about collective impact that is a part of that tier.
So that, that section just sets you up to understand um, what we mean about the tiers. And then the next session, it was another important section is how much money is available. Um, we have so many different things in the community to do. And there is money here over $5,000 annually for three years. You will see some important um, notes about the county and city of, of Santa Cruz processes uh, about the um, Board of Supervisors and, and the council, kind of what we plan to do of describing the applications first in March and then coming back later um, with proposals. And then the next table, this is um, at this time, this is where we, we um, we think that the, the money will fall out in these tiers that uh, I described, and I'm sure you're starting to, to dig into various tiers uh, for the direct services over a broad base of areas by funding amount and targeted impact. You will see there is a reference that when we come back um, to the, the board and city, uh, city council uh, about the applications, Certainly these could be reevaluated about distribution, but this is the money and it is based on prior patterns, but you're gonna tell us about the needs. And so it'll certainly be a continuous process to look at uh, exactly how those will fall out. So that, that's kind of two really important pieces, but as we get more into the details and narrow, one question is, what do you propose? How do you think about it? Here's a section on the application scope, meaning how do you package the um, proposal? And so we are asking for those proposals to be packaged um, or put together in, as a program or a project. It is ultimately up to the applicant to define that. Um, we give you some, um, some guides and some things to consider that some agencies may define a uh, program with everything that they, uh, they do. And then some agencies may have multiple programs. Also, these, this RFP is open to collaborative applications. So there's a note there to think about that. Often um, many are described as projects and so you can submit a collaborative project. And we ask that the fiscal lead of that project be the, um, the person, the entity applying. And then this section on application parameters, I'll ask that you will review this um, more and more as you go along. Um, this is very, it, it is a critical foundational piece in the sense that um, we have some parameters here that you wanna always consider that, that you, asking agencies not to apply for that same exact program in, in more than one tier. Meaning just kind of exactly described in the same way and it's just every tier. Um, that is not um, what the intent is here. And also for agencies to um, apply no more than 25% of the total available funding. Those are some important um, parameters and you can kind of continue to, to look at, um, at those pieces as you go along. Now, I know when I'm looking at RFPs, this is one I often scan to quickly and this is the, the scoring criteria section. In this hybrid approach, we have divided it out where you have a scoring criteria for that small, medium and large tiers. The tiers are um, described in, as an opportunity to align the, um, the application burden and contract complexity with size. And so you'll see the, the, the growing breadth of information um, required as um, the tiers go up. And so they are divided into sections and one important resource to be looking at as you go along. And in this hybrid approach, you'll see that, um, that the next um, scoring criteria is targeted impact. So when you're looking at those, they're really, um, they're, they're very similar, yet there are some nuanced differences. Um, so targeted impact here has its own criteria with the same exact categories, um, just some further detail that looks a little bit differently and some other items to consider. That is in um, this RFP. One thing I will note is um, kind of pulling some pieces together. In the beginning, you saw that description of equity. 
In the small, medium, and large, the applicant may define equity as they wish. In targeted uh, impact here, it is defined as racial equity. Certainly may speak to more than just racial equity, but that is a component that you'll see in the scoring criteria. So that's a lot. That's a lot of the content um, that gives you that starting foundation to consider as well as how uh, ultimately reviewers will be looking at the application. Then we start going in, in this document onto process. This outlines the steps in the, uh, in the process and gives you greater detail. There is an online portal. Now talk about a learning opportunity. We're, we're going to be learning, this is new and there'll be uh, applications by tiers and it is, um, we're finding it very useful in the sense that it has, it's fairly easy to use for the most part. However, anything new takes a minute. So we're gonna have uh, opportunities that we're gonna tell you about where you can access an orientation as well as individual assistance. If there's anything um, as you experience when submitting um, this online portal. And the big due date here, you'll see outlined February 4th is what we're shooting for. And so you've got some time, but I know things go quickly um, and you wanna mark that on your calendar. As typical in other applications, there is alternative formats. We do uh, are requesting, um, and it is a criteria to have a timely submission. So you've outlined here what exactly that means on the various different ways. Online portal will have a date stamp, how it will be done if you were to submit a hard copy. Those details are here. We have summarized in this table here about what does it mean to have um, a complete application. It is the questionnaire that's either in the online portal or we have a form available if you wish not to use that. And I've noted a, a couple of pieces here. That questionnaire is the, the bulk um, of, of the proposal. It also includes a budget form within it. The large and targeted impact tiers also have a requirement of fiscal year financial statements available to the agency that often can, be, can vary a little bit. So we left it open for that agency to define what fiscal year that is. However, um, that is required to submit that information if you're applying for those tiers. And you will note that those first parameters that we uh, are in the beginning of, the, um, of this RFP, it does come up here in the process that we will be reviewing for those parameters. As soon as those applications come in, we'll review for those. A little bit more information, we're telling you a lot about that email. Um, that is one process to um, submit questions today as you go along. Uh, that is the, the primary email that we have dedicated for this funding. There is also a voicemail. If you have questions, we encourage you to use the, um, the email. That, that way we can make sure to get, um, get it in writing so we, we get your um, question Clearly, however, if, if you want to do both, that, that is um, certainly sufficient. Um, but putting those questions in email as much as you can is, um, is appreciated. Talked about some of these events. Here we are in the first applicant conference. And as I noted, the online portal support, we've got something coming up this Friday as well as later in the process, just to walk you through that um, online portal and, and how best to use it and a way to, to call to get some extra support if needed. The section on 5.6, that's where we, a little bit um, pertinent today. So I wanna stop there for a second. Questions and responses. It is, it is certainly uh, a part of the, the goal of the county and city is to answer the questions in a timely way, as well as a consistent and transparent way for all applicants. So that means that we don't answer questions at an individual level. Wouldn't be, you know, call, hey, share, what should I do in this section? And I would answer it. Instead, there is a process um, to ensure the information um, is available to everyone at the same time. And that means we are gonna post the answers on these dates at minimum. 
then they will be on that website that we showed you and that you, you've probably accessed a little bit. And there is a section there about questions and responses. And at minimum, you're going to see an updated document on those dates, including next week, where we'll have um, responses to the questions that come in today and anything that, that comes in by the end of day Monday will include. Also, that last little bit about bold and bolded there. You will see that we are posting, um, the last posting in this process is January 20th. So that means any question that we get by January 17th will be able to include, and there won't be answers to other questions after that. So another important piece just to highlight. I'm gonna wait for um, Nicole to tell you a little bit more about this training and support um, that has many good tools for it should you uh, wish to participate. And the next, uh, go on to the next sections, they're, they're pointing to some other processes that are after the application, but can give you some details about how the panel participants um, will, will um, what are some of the elements there of consideration uh, around diversity, as well as an important element about the awards, um, the timing. All of this information is summarized on the next page. And this is the timeline of the milestones. I know for me in RFP, I sometimes print this out and, and put it on my wall. It really highlights all those steps that I um, mentioned that were at that applicant conference on December 1st. You'll see the posting um, dates there of when you um, may wish to look at the site again to see any clarifications. Also, there will be um, more information, details on this uh, around the training. It is on the website, so this is really kind of a summary that they will be providing training uh, in December through January, and you can sign up for those on, on our website. And so noting these various pieces that um, are of support and to that, that um, deadline of February 4th at 5 p.m. After that, we will um, do a first step of assessing applications. And if they do not um, meet the parameters that are identified in the beginning of, of the RFP, uh, as I mentioned, that would we would notify uh, the applicant if we, we see that information or it appears that possibly are not meeting a parameter. Then I think both, um, I know I, I alluded to it, Randy may have, is that in March there will be a description to, um, to the County Board of Supervisors and the City Council about applications coming in. There will be a panel review process um, of There'll be several panels. There'll be a lot of applications we expect. So that will be a process that occurs through March and maybe into April a little bit. Um, and then what we are shooting for is to, um, based on that information from the panels, is bring to these, um, these decision-making bodies a list of proposed awards. At that time, they are conditional is um, what we usually refer to it, meaning um, that there is an intent to award and the very final finalization um, of the County Board of Supervisors and the City Council will adopt those in June, which is, uh, if you're familiar um, with these, um, these types of things, you'll, it is within the, the budget um, meetings that that occurs. And we're going to get going on the contracts as soon as we can, um, and they do start July um, 1. They may take a minute to kind of finalize that paperwork, um, but the, it, the services are expected to start July 1. I think that wraps up the, um, the, the processes. Um, and so that all those sections, a lot about content, some about the funding, as well as the processes. I'm gonna hand it over to George now to talk about these, talk about the application itself and what are some summary um, guideposts. Take it away, George. Thank you, Sharon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm gonna go over the application instructions um, piece by piece and I'll, I'll hand it back to Shara to talk about the budget piece. And you can find these on pages 14 through 18 of the, the RFP. And these instructions are intended to summarize uh, each section of the application, provide support for and completing the application. And one of the things that Shara noted is because we have this hybrid approach, 
the application for all the tiers have some of the same questions, but the breadth and complexity uh, increases and changes by tier. And so it'll be important for you to think about what uh, tier you're applying for and uh, respond accordingly. Um, and really to use both this uh, section of the application instructions as well as the scoring criteria to understand what information is needed. Um, the first section uh, in the application is the summary and contact information. And this is intended to gather basic information and it will be used to support the process um, and describe the application, but it's not going to be related to scoring. And one of the, the key features, as Shara mentioned, is that um, agencies will define the type of funding uh, request that they're asking for, whether it's for their, their individual single agency or for a collaborative proposal. And the collaborative proposal is one where there's a fiscal lead and at least one other agency who is to receive the funding. And so moving on to the next section, the why do it, uh, this section inquires about the community and or target population's needs and strengths. And part of that is identifying the core condition, which Shara mentioned earlier, um, where uh, individuals be, be asked to select a core condition in an impact area that the the uh, proposal will be addressing. Um, and again, this is uh, for informational and tracking purposes and will not af affect an applicant's score. Uh, we'll also in this section be asking about the, the needs and strengths um, that the proposal will address. Um, and the applicants are encouraged to consider the information that best describes the level of need as well as strengths or assets in the community. And again, based on the tier, um, the breadth and complexity of the information uh, will change. Um, moving on then to the next page, again, as Sherry mentioned that this proposal is rooted in equity considerations. And so we'll be asking applicants for, for the tiers to define their equity dimensions um, and, and think about how that is defined for the proposed program or project. And as Shara also mentioned, the targeted impact tier will focus on racial equity, but that tier will also be able to consider other uh, equity considerations uh, in it. The next section in the application process is what should be done. And this section focuses on the program or project proposed and the participants served. And so part of this, uh, that we're, as a, which is a tool available, which Shara mentioned, and there is technical assistance available from the core consultants on this particular tool, is the core results menu. Um, which guides uh, applicants into different program strategies and outcomes that they might consider uh, for this uh, proposal. And then part of this section is the, what is the program or project being proposed? And we encourage uh, indiv uh, individual organizations to be as specific as possible when articulating their activities, the population served and program outcomes. And so, um, one of the expectations in the application is to, to be mindful of what progress is expected. And the, part, the uh, applicants will be asked to, um, to uh, list out the anticipated progress and outcomes and how it will be measured. Uh, and to be mindful of including the target difference desired for whom, as well as the measurement tool. So then, um, Moving on to the next section um, on the next page, what tells you it works? Um, all applicants are asked to describe why they think the proposed services will meet those outcomes. And again, that based on the tier uh, that the proposal is in, the breadth and complexity of information will change. Um, all applicants are asked to summarize the information in a narrative answer, as well as identify the practices or programs that help achieve the outcomes. And so, for example, a local program might identify an interviewing technique that is part of their program um, that is evidence-based or a set of uh, client interview techniques that they've identified um, that they would um, uh, highlight in the application. Um, and within those programs, they'll be asked to select the type of evidence that the primary program or practices are informed by. And uh, using the core continuum, uh, the emerging good ideas, effective practice and evidence-based practice, uh, applicants will be asked to choose where it falls on the continuum. And again, this continuum uh, 
does not impact score. It is a, a way of understanding where the evidence uh, is coming from and how the program is, is utilizing it. Um, and then in the applicants are asked how they will collect and use information um, for data and learning purposes, and that will uh, be impacted by which tier the application is in. And then uh, the next section is who are the participants, and we'll be asking applicants to estimate the unique number of participants of those programs they're applying for. Um, and uh, for each of the fiscal years, they're asking for funding. And then uh, the, another uh, section is what is the organizational capacity? And questions in this section inquire about the agency's capacity to provide the proposed services, uh, meaning what are the experience, knowledge, and our success in achieving its mission? Um, and also uh, because the core investments is centered on equity, uh, applicants are encouraged to think how the agency uh, or collaborative plans are currently conducts uh, Kind of equity advancing activities. And uh, with that, I will pass it back to Shara to talk about the budget. Thank you, George. Um, so that that is kind of the essence um, of, of most of um, the application. So you, you will have a couple of tools. Um, I suggest is you'll have the scoring criteria, you'll have these application instructions, and then you'll have the application um, as, you know, in essence, the application where, where prompters are made around this information. One tool we have provided, I know sometimes I like to draft things out before working in an online application system, and we have forms on our website that if you wish, you could be filling those out first in your, your period of drafting. Um, so just, just a note of another tool out there. The budget, there are two types of budgets um, in this RFP. One would be a single agency that is, is applying for one or multiple programs. That would be, um, and just the, the money is, is intended just for that agency, but there's also going to be um, possibly collaborative budgets where the budget will be discussed with various agencies in those collaboratives. I wanna highlight that we have separate forms um, to be able to um, provide that information um, if you are um, proposing a collaborative budget. We put some detail here and made every effort to be as clear as possible. The information there about what to put in the budget um, is what will guide you. There isn't additional information. Uh, it is very high level, um, but those are some major points of identifying the personnel, identifying non-personnel, and you will you have um, an area where you can summarize that, that it's going to be supplies for the services or um, various facility costs, things like that would be summarized. And it's just one amount, as well as there is an opportunity to uh, request an administrative rate. This is um, the first time we, were, we are, are defining it in this manner. And so work to try and clarify as best we can. Um, there's a definition there and that it, it is um, defined as the, the percentage by, by the agency. There are a couple of things. There isn't an exact amount that you have to go by, um, although we um, will not be accepting requests for over 15%, there is a guide point. The federal regulations often ask for 10%. And so this is for that applicant to describe to a panelist um, about why more or less um, is, is needed in that descriptor box. That, that is the budget. The budget forms may be found on our website. They're also in the application. So you don't have to go to the website and find something separate. They are in the application. Just there if you wish to um, start thinking about it and considering it, um, they're also there. That additional information, there's uh, a request for, for one additional upload of information is that the financial statement, if you are applying for large or targeted impact. I skipped one. Also, there's a reference to non-collusion, which is um, identified and, and that is an attestation um, that will be asked. Um, and it's all laid out in the application. It's not something you have to 
to go and, and ensure is in there, there will be a question um, and as well as it'll be prompted to upload the financial statements. So that's, that's the application instructions. Um, what you'll see in um, the next sections are really tools um, to be able to interpret that information. Here is a glossary uh, where we summarized all the various terms that come up. Um, and you'll see that they are defined in the document and defined more here um, for further detail. I'll keep going on that. Um, I also um, alluded to there's more information about the core framework. We really work to make sure all information that you need is in this RFP. There are opportunities to learn more, but to, um, to do the RFP, it is contained in this document. Um, and you'll see um, this, this document that goes through each condition and how to think about it, or it is defined. Also, here's an example in the RFP. You'll see this in the application. But just letting you know what that's about. Um, um, the, the council asking, asking us to ensure that this isn't in the application and, and you can read through that and talk about that with, with your administrative staff if you wish. And it's just an attestation uh, of this information in the application. So we keep going. These are examples of things. Again, you'll find this is the questions um, that you'll find in the application around target population. It is asking um, for detail and acknowledge um, that these, these may be estimates. Um, this is about the numbers you uh, expect to serve in that first year. You don't have to um, break this out for every year, but to estimate in that first year how you, how you think the demographics um, of those participants um, in, in the services um, you, you think it will look like. It certainly may change in time, but just based on the information you know and have, how do you estimate that? Also pointed out in the application, we are asking um, to, to pick a category of services. This is simply for description. So uh, a lot of times we all use different words. And so we have a, a pull down menu to identify the description that best um, meets how you consider the proposal of services and targeted impact. Um, you may uh, have more than one um, that's understood, but in small, medium, and large, this is the primary one um, that, that you describe your services as. And of course, there is an other box too, if, if there's not something here that, that really fits. Now this budget, um, I referenced that in the instructions. Um, you can, if you wanna start looking at that, you can look on our, our, our website and, and get the form. This is really just a copy of some of the major elements. What I want to um, emphasize here is that you will see a place for the requested um, budget amount. Some uh, applicants may wish to um, apply for a contribution to a larger program. And if so, they may tell us the amount that they will be uh, having expected um, to match or add to. Um, it is not required that you do to do that, but if it does make sense to tell your larger story that this is a contribution, there is an uh, opportunity to describe that in the budget. It is three years. It's it's, some pieces are very high level, while the detail is more in the personnel, asking you to tell us uh, about language or bilingual status a little bit in that narrative, and, and, and tell that story about why you, you know, who, how you would spend the money, um, and if, if needed, you know, you could explain very briefly <laughs> why it's needed um, in that budget narrative. And you'll see a line for the admin overhead. Um, so I hope, and then you'll see, I definitely just emphasize again, there's two different ways. There's uh, a single agency budget and a collaborative budget. And you'll have to define what makes the most sense if you're applying for multiple agencies um, funding or, or just a single agency. Then some of you, if you've been working with, with um, core framework, you might have seen this before. It is the continuum of results and evidence. You will see that, um, there's a, a large um, or comprehensive, I should say, spectrum emerging to um, what is defined as evidence-based. Um, and this is 
again, just descript our information about what is the research and evidence um, that the proposal that, that you are making, what does it align with? Um, so we can describe those, describe that evidence. And the person reading the application can understand that as well. These, one of the last sections here is the additional terms and conditions. This are the provisions um, that are support this RFP that you will see um, about different pieces of how if, if you should wish to withdraw um, an application, uh, how the county interprets information, what is the responsibility of the applicant, um, different pieces to go through here. Um, it is standard county language. Um, should there ever be an addenda, it, it notes that, um, should that ever be happen, then that would be posted on um, the HSD website. Um, kind of already mentioned a little bit about non-collusion. We have put that in the application. And so that you may want to go through that um, in just more detail when you have a moment. Um, those are the provisions that really um, just support the RFP and processes uh, around that the county and city would use. Running out of time, I'll have you, have you um, speed up there, Nicole. Kind of going through each piece there. There is an other section that captures a number of pieces that you'll want to review. And this, um, you'll see that that was about the application period. And these are some provisions that the county has about um, should, should uh, your proposal be awarded. It applies um, about licenses that um, really, that applications are that there won't a public opening, meaning that um, there won't be someone there at that time, but you can submit um, the RFP all the way up to the February 5th. Public opening usually means that there's a county person standing there. Um, also, that applications would be available for the public after award of contract. Talking about a possibility of a pre-award con uh, con pre conference, things like that. Again, I won't go through all this detail. Um, um, but those are various pieces um, that you'll want to review. And then um, protests and appeals. As Randy mentioned, the there is two layers to the protest and appeals procedure. The, the first layer um, goes to um, the County General Services Director in partnership um, or in coordination with um, the HSD Department Director as well as the City Manager um, that would consider that first um, appeal. And um, and submit they would submit their their um, decision, and if for some reason that does not resolve, there is a second layer of appeal that is described there at the bottom um, about going to the government entity, which in this case is the county board of supervisors or the city council, and that's the second layer of appeal. various details about the processes. And I believe this is the last section. This is about um, county uh, conditions or standard terms that would be in a contract. So if you were awarded, these are um, things that would be asked to um, agree to. These are standard provisions. And so giving to you as a heads up, if you, if you haven't had a county contract before, something you, you want to consider um, to in, ensure that um, the organization would be able to uh, agree to these um, standard provisions. I think we're um, running a little bit behind timeline, but that sure was a lot of talking at you, so I'm eager to go to the next section. And I will have Nicole tell you a little bit about training on the core investments framework, and then um, we'll take a break. Great. Thanks, Sharon. I'll, I'll keep it quick. So I know several of you already know Nicole Lezen and I as the core consultants. Um, many of you have, att have attended core institute events in the past. And so we are offering a variety of training and technical assistance or TA opportunities throughout the RFP process um, and uh, consider those part of what we do for the Core Institute. 
So we will, so you can always look at the HSD website for the full list and registration links for all the different training and TA offerings. Uh, we're starting next week with some structured trainings on things like developing a theory of change and logic model with an equity lens. Even though you're not going to be required to submit something like a theory of change and logic model with your application, it can help with the grant proposal writing or with the planning process. And so we wanted to start with that in case anyone is trying to figure out how do I even put these thoughts together in the application so I'm ready to submit a proposal. Um, all of the structured trainings that you see here that have like a, a name of the, of the training, we'll offer each of those twice just to make sure that it's accessible, available uh, for those of you who'd like to participate in live sessions. We will record all of these trainings as well. And so you'll see that those links will also be posted on this website uh, within a few days after each event. We're also offering group office hours, again, throughout the duration of the RFP process. In December, we're starting off with some sessions that are geared towards the type or the tier of application, just to help you think through like, is this the right tier for me? Or <laughs> how do we go about thinking about, you know, again, crafting a proposal for that tier? So again, offering just multiple options for these uh, office hours. So we're, we're asking you to sign up for each of those, whichever ones you want to attend, just so we have an idea of how many people to expect. The trainings themselves, the structured trainings, again, where you see a topic, those will all be offered in English with simultaneous Spanish interpretation. So there will be a recording in both English and Spanish. Things like group office hours and the individual TA sessions that I'll mention in a moment will offer simultaneous interpretation if it's, if it's requested during the registration. So we encourage you to think about um, you know, inviting community members or some of your clients or customers that you work with to, you know, that are helping inform your proposal or help, you know, they're part of the planning process. If they um, speak Spanish, then we can make uh, those kinds of language accommodations. So again, there's group office hours and, and the office hours will be really informal. So we're not gonna come with any prepared content. It's really a chance for you to come with your questions and we'll, um, you know, do our best to offer resources and ideas, but also encourage dialogue among the group. And then, so you'll see all the registration links here. And then up here, last thing I'll mention is, um, you can also sign up for one-on-one -on -one TA sessions on this Google Sheet. So if you follow that link, it opens up this sheet here, where you can enter in the name of uh, kind of the primary person and anybody else that plans to come with you. Uh, we're trying to keep them to just you know, two to three people, three to four people max per group. Um, but this is where you can get some more individualized assistance. Uh, and, you know, think of Nicole and I as your thought partners, um, you know, to help you understand how to use some of the tools that Sharon and George mentioned. We're not, gonna, we're not able to do things like answer some of the technical questions about the RFP, like the process, the contents of the RFP. We'll direct you back to the county for those kinds of questions. Thank you, Nicole. Um, right now, we're going to take a, a screen break um, for, for many of you needing to attend to other things or to consider questions. We will come back in 10 minutes. Um, so that will be 325. And then we will have an opportunity to, um, to, have, to hear your questions um, that you've either submitted or would just prefer to um, verbally um, talk about them. And um, we'll, we'll do our best to respond to what we can and certainly acknowledge um, the many good questions that are coming in. So please take a break and um, we'll see you shortly. Just a few minutes, I'm gonna be asking Tiffany to open it up um, and um, to any questions that you, you'd like to add verbally. We're seeing lots of good questions on the Padlet coming in. Also noting some of the, the pieces in chat, um, but I'll hand it over to Tiffany. Um, so you, you may add any information that you like. Okay, hi everyone. I believe it's my understanding that um, 
that the county folks are going to be publishing answers to all the questions, but today we're just looking to capture those questions, whether it's in the Padlet, which I see a number of questions and a number of themes emerging around uh, different types of questions in the Padlet. We're also transferring questions that come up in the chat over to the Padlet, and I know, I'm noting that there's maybe a couple that haven't made it over that are most recent, so if our folks who are working on that can take a look at that. Um, maybe we'll go ahead and see if anyone wants to ask any questions verbally for about 10 minutes. And if we have time, I can review some of the major uh, themes that I saw around questions in the Padlet. Um, so does I think we want to go ahead and use your raise hand feature. I'm scanning right now to see. You can go down to the reactions at the bottom of the screen and go ahead and raise your hand if you have a question. And um, we will ask you to come off mute and answer that question. I'm scanning right now and I'm not seeing hands. So if anyone um, wants to just come off mute and ask a question, you can do so. And if not, I can go ahead and start summarizing what I've seen um, from the Padlet, some key questions and question areas. So stop I, talking. Does any, yeah, please I know go Nicole, ahead. Nicole is going to be loading that up so we can all see the Padlet. Uh, Awesome. Do, is anybody, again, I'll just give one more shout out for any verbal questions that anyone wants to ask right now before we just go ahead and start um, kind of uh, summarizing some of the questions that we've seen. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Uh, Tiffany, I, I, see a, I see a hand. Claudia has her oh, hand up. Great. Please, Claudia, come off mute and go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Uh, thank you very much for all the useful information. Uh, my question is very quick. I just want to know if all the trainings will be available with a link. Um, so if they are going to be recorded, because in the in the chat that you show, um, some of them appear as non-applicable or is just for the group uh, meetings that they are not going to be uh, records. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and note that down. I'm not sure, are we gonna answer that question right now, Nicole or Shara? Or are we gonna, gonna answer that one, Shara? Um, sure, we could certainly just address that quickly. There are some links that you're reminding me are not on the website and we will have those up um, immediately. Um, there sounds like there's just a few more uh, links that we need to get up on the website. And I think Claudia's question might also be about the office hours because uh, those are listed as NA, like that there won't be a link provided. We uh, we will record those if as long as whoever is participating in those office hours, I'll give permission because they'll be talking about probably their specific <laughs> proposals or ideas. So we'll want to make sure that everyone is okay with that. Um, and so if it's recorded, then we will uh, provide those links to HSD to put on the website. Okay, thank the, you very much. The, Individual sessions, the one-on-one -on -one TA sessions, will not be recorded. Thank you, Nicole. Um, I'm just scanning again to see if there's any hands raised, and I'm not seeing any more right now. Um, Nicole or Cher, do you see any anything that I'm missing, any hands up that I'm missing? I don't think so at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, go to the Padlet then. I did, um, over the course of, of this uh, Zoom meeting, I did, um, and Nicole just put the Padlet link in the chat again for those of you that wanna go over and take a look at the questions yourselves, or you can enter more questions in. There are a variety of questions across the five different categories. Um, First things first, so there's a specific question. If we had, if uh, organization had a specific question about their application, they wanted to talk to someone live, I think that Nicole kind of hit on this, that that needs to be county staff. Is that correct? If, um, uh, it, unless it's uh, related to uh, the, the proposal uh, itself. Is that correct? 
uh, just, yes, it depends on a little bit about what the question is. If you want to learn more about the core conditions, and that would be helpful to you, that will be covered in, in training, um, just to understand the framework. But any particular questions about the application, yes, please um, submit those um, through, through the email. Great. And um, one other thing, um, Shara, um, on publishing the answers to the questions, when are you anticipating that those, uh, that these uh, questions, uh, the answers are published? And I'm assuming they'll be published at the website? Yes, they'll be Thursday, um, December 9th, and that date is in the RFP as well as on the website. And you will see a section on the website um, that is um, titled Questions and Responses. Um, and that will be, so all these great questions coming in, I'm seeing lots of different themes and some important things to, to clarify. Um, it will be listed in, um, on the website um, by the great. night, great. by the end of day night. Thank you, Shara. And one other question I see in the Padlet is, can the entire application be viewed at the website? And I believe that that had been answered, that it is available to view, correct? Yes, I'm seeing Shara shake her head yes. Yes, there are, I'm seeing that question as well. There are um, forms, I would guess I'd call them, uh, um, they are Word documents um, that have the exact same questions that you'll find on the online portal. They're posted on the website. So you can begin drafting in that, um, in that format and they do have the specifications on, on Word counts um, to start that process. You, you don't have to start in the online application if you prefer not to. The, the portal, which will be um, described for usage on, on Friday or an, at another time, uh, if you wish, um, does allow you to come back to it. Um, you certainly can, but so it's, it's optional, but there are some forms where you could see all of the, all the questions there in one place by tier. Great. Thank you, Shara. I also see um, a number of questions around definitions of equity and collective impact that we'll need to address. Also, there are several questions around evidence-based practices. Number one, um, are there resources or clearinghouses for EBPs, whether they will be required, and whether those programs who utilize them um, are given more weight. And then lastly, have uh, evidence-based programs been evaluated on their effectiveness in producing equity? So I see a number of, of uh, comments around EBPs. I don't know that anyone needs to take that on to answer right now. I'm just noting that. Um, there are also a few questions about how um, different aspects of applications could be viewed favorably. For example, do collaborative applic or will uh, collaborative applications be weighted more heavily or favored over individual agency apps? Will having bilingual staff noted um, be viewed more favorably? Um, I think that there's even uh, another regarding that. So I don't know that, um, that that's something that anyone wants to touch answering right now, but um, did see some of those kinds of questions. Okay. Um, also, um, there's a question, and I see I'm not I'm not keeping up with all. There's a, a big flow of questions coming in the Padlet right now, but some others that I noted earlier on, this might be uh, an easier one that could be answered now, and that is regarding funding amounts. There's a question: Will smaller amounts be offered than requested, or outright declined if they cannot be fully funded? Not sure that's something maybe we'll want to address afterwards and, and not address uh, necessarily right now. Um, let's see here. There's, um, there's some questions about, um, oh goodness, this is going so fast here. Um, oh, about the, the years um, on timing, whether organizations need to apply again next year if they don't get funding this year, or when is the next opportunity, and secondarily, can there be different amounts proposed for different years? So I see some timing questions that have come up. Um, I'll just give a pause to see if Cher or anyone wants to, to come in on any of those. Sure, I, I can hop in on, on a few. And 
um, as kind of continuing, and I know there'll probably be questions um, throughout the day and, and tomorrow, lots of great questions. I do want to um, let you know, I will try and answer a few questions and that there is not a priority around it by any means. It is simply just some things that are very easily um, coming to me versus we really want to have some thoughtful analysis and consideration here. And if um, we truly are not uh, clear, um, there is some possibilities. If you let us know your, your name or in an email, um, we can um, follow up with clarity questions, but all of these are looking very clear. Um, one, one section of questions, would, um, I would refer people to what is published in the budget section of the application instructions. Um, I know that is one place that it is uh, described as well as in the funding amounts is that this is funding that is the same amount each year for three years. It is not, so what we are uh, requesting in the application is to ask for the same amount each year versus some um, funding streams might, might, might kind of change throughout the period. This is the same amount each year. We ask you to also consider that. Um, some may consider that in terms of services or changes to the program. That certainly is something that you can speak to. Um, for the uh, amount that is available, it is the same amount each, each year. Um, so that I know is both in the budget and in the funding application. Uh, I see a lot of great budget questions and some where I'm like, oh, I wish I had clarified that and I'll make sure um, to, to clarify that in our responses uh, about the admin rate um, pieces like that. We'll make sure if there's anything additional that we can, we can clarify. Uh, there's a lot of questions around EBPs. One thing is I do want to uh, emphasize, I think it might answer a few questions, is that you will see in the RFP in that first section called the core investments framework, there is a section on um, that's it's basically evidence-based practices. It is called the core continuum and the promising practices database. I'll get you the page here in a second. That's an important um, part to read. It refers to a couple of tools. There is a reference to a tool that's called the Promising Practices Database, optional tool, but I saw one question if there was any ideas about a clearinghouse. There is not a particular one um, that has to be used in any way. That is a local one um, that will, I likely, the core consultants will review that in a training. It is one opportunity um, to look. And what's, what I think is kind of neat about that is it has a lot of uh, local um, programs in there. So um, it is developed here in our community as well as having national programs. And the core continuum of results and evidence, the wording, um, Slightly different in some areas, but you'll see in the um, in the core continuum of results and evidence, there is alignment, and they ensure that um, the wording so you can easily see what's in promising practices and, and what um, how is that described in the continuum. So we're all on the same page about um, shared language. Emphasize again, there is not a rating um, or preference um, greater score for higher levels of evidence. This is about telling the evidence that makes sense for the, um, the proposal. It is descriptive versus um, saying that if it has more research than that, that is better in some ways. It's not meant to uh, imply that. It is a description. And looking at that section is a great place to start. And also, um, if you are interested to have um, to learn more, I know that that will be in the training in the TA for something that you can dive uh, deeper in. Another hey, area. Oh, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, go go right ahead. If you wanted, I wanted to point some out that have a yes, lot of likes you. on them. But if you have something else, that please would be go great. Ahead. I love that. Thank okay, you. good. You're, you already honed in on the evidence-based programs. There were a lot of likes on those questions. There's also a lot of likes on uh, a question regarding, um, in my read of the RFP, city funds will only be used for programs serving city residents. 
So how will countywide projects be funded? Similarly, what percent of county funds will be used for programs serving residents of the unincorporated areas? So I think we'll clarify that. Shara, do you, I didn't know if you wanna address that now or? Um, we'll certainly come back to that in the, the published responses, but there um, you will, there is no, um, nothing in the RFP that indicates there is a preference or percentage looking at particular areas in the county. So it is up to the applicant to describe that impact. Um, there, there isn't, you know, one area um, above another or any way. It is um, for the applicants to articulate the need um, in the areas that, that they see. Okay, hey, thank you, Cheryl. I think one of the most liked questions was, is there consideration of the size of the agency budget in terms of the request for small, medium, large, or all the, are the tiers merely based on the amount of the request made? Good, great, thank you. And I'm getting that um, from Alex as well. Yes, it's, that's an important question. It is not at all related to the agency budget. It is uh, what we mean there is based on the funding request. So it could be a very large agency um, who may ask for a $10,000 request. And so the tiers are based on that funding amount versus um, an agency budget. Okay, great. Um, I think that there's, let's see, one other question. Well, getting back, I mentioned that there's a question, there are questions around definitions, and I see one that a lot of people uh, liked is that if we individually define what equity means in our proposal, how will this be scored? How will decisions be made? Are there equity metrics or standards? That's um, a lot, I know. <laughs> yes, another important question. So I do refer you to, to look at the equity section is, is one piece in the core framework um, section. Also, um, there is in the application instructions, it talks about how it is asked in the application. For small, medium, and large, we there is equity. Equity can be defined in many ways. And so there isn't a preference on one way or another. There is a drop down menu of common ways that um, they are defined, and it is to, to select what is the most, um, what is the aspect that the proposal addresses um, or considers, thinks about, uh, hopes to um, work on. That is the, the question is what, how do you describe that equity dimension? There's a drop down menu, but also there is room to tell your story and, and talk about that in the needs, in the needs section. Um, I kind of, uh, kind of shorthand call it the needs section. Um, I think the formal is, um, I'm not actually, I'm kind of uh, not remembering, but basically what, what are the issues, what are the problems, what are the needs and the strengths that you see in a, in a community that your proposal hopes to address and equity may, um, encouraging applications to consider equity in that question. It might be inequities that are, that are seen that the proposal hopes to address. Um, there is certainly no intent to say racial equity is, is one above the other. It is um, in targeted impact. It is used um, as a kind of a, a foundational element. It, it, a targeted impact application certainly could work on other, other areas. You, I will again point you to the equity section about um, that describes uh, racial equity while sometimes that is used in an initial process um, to describe that. And we are all learning about equity. So we are acknowledging we are all in process and asking you to define and, and uh, about how you see it and where your, your organization is at in the processes uh, around equity as far as impacting those you serve as well as um, processes in, in the organization and how you consider, consider that. Thank okay. you, Shara. Sure. I know we're coming to the end of our time, but I do think there's one question in the chat that really should, it's a clarification of one of the responses you gave. And it and I it says so the city of Santa Cruz will potentially support a program that focuses all their services in South County or Watsonville. That doesn't sound realistic. I know that that is not the case. Do you want to go ahead and make a clarification on that, Cheryl? Um, and I'm happy to hand that to you, Tiffany. That um, as far as what the city plans to do. Um, 
the city and county are collaborating on, on the, the funding. That means um, the city will dedicate their funding towards programs that will primarily serve the city, their actual amount, but they, we will be working, the county and city will be working together um, to make funding decisions. And so, but the actual funding will be dedicated towards, towards the city programs. And they'll yeah. certainly, the county will dedicate both in the city and um, throughout the county, depending on, on what, what is described in these applications. So hoping that's a little bit clearer um, about the I city think of so. Santa Cruz. Yeah, thank you so much. If we have time, there's one last question that might be kind of a simple one to end on. Um, if your program addresses more than one core condition, can you select more than one or do you just have to direct program and proposal to one? Thank you. Um, so with that question, I do refer you to the, um, the framework section that talks about the core conditions and the application instructions and, and the scoring criteria. You will see in those sections that it in small, medium, and large, asking to have the primary core condition. It is acknowledged and written in the RFP that many programs might uh, also address the core conditions are interconnected, certainly may address influence other conditions. It is for descriptive purposes to show what the primary area of influence, there is narrative in from, um, places that you can tell that story um, if, if it impacts other areas. In targeted impact that is uh, a larger project, therefore um, there is the question may be answered, um, say a couple of conditions, but again, um, that information is not necessarily, it is not, is not scored. <laughs> I shouldn't say necessarily, it's definitely not scored. It is um, descriptive, descriptive to see how, what uh, the proposals mm -hmm. are primarily targeting. Okay, great. Um, just want to also acknowledge a number of people have liked, um, just this is really a comment that this is a lot for small grassroots agencies applying to the county or city for the first time. They appreciate the technical assistance, but it seems daunting. And I think we'd all encourage folks to reach out to the Nicole Young and, and the Nicoles and, and really seek out that technical assistance. Yes, um, certainly acknowledge there, um, there are different layers um, and those who maybe uh, had gotten some of this information and been involved with the core coffee chats or some element of, of training and exposed to some pieces while others may be very new and um, I just absolutely acknowledge that. And our intent is to certainly offer that support through the core consultants and encourage you to lean into that uh, as much as possible. I know we did it in the last cycle and had heard rave reviews about the support, not only for the application, but also for program design in general. Um, so that is a good place to start to help put it together. Um, and again, it's, it's not about what the actual funding in this request, but it is about thinking about uh, outcomes and programs. Um, that, that is what the core framework al allows um, an organization or program to do. Great, thank you. I, I guess I just wanna say in conclusion, um, I do see uh, the last comment in the chat from Clay Kempf. I'm wondering if Clay might be able to frame his um, comment in a question in the Padlet. I wasn't able to track what that followed on to, and we want to be sure that that question gets answered. So with that, I think I'll turn it back over to Shara and the county team. Thank you. Um, yes, Clay, I appreciate that. Um, anything that, that you can clarify, we want to hear your, your question. Um, when you can put it in a form of a question, it is much easier. Um, Seeing a, a kind of a number of, um, of various questions and think we'll, we'll have to take these back. Um, and thank you so much for, for your good thinking. Already see that the great thinking of this, this community um, considering these aspects. I will point out as you go through the, the scoring criteria is another looking at those elements uh, of the content in the beginning. Looking at that scoring criteria, a lot of questions on whether this will be rated more, more than that. There, 
there are many things that will not be addressed and you, you'll see that there isn't a score of um, a collaborative budget versus a single agency it is a better score. It is the applicant to tell that story about why a collaboration would be better. Uh, small, medium, and large, um, it could look both ways. Targeted impact can be done through a single agency or a collaborative, but there is an expectation to collaborate. Um, so that is the difference. How you do it in the budget could be different ways, um, but there is an expectation expectation that that is uh, a collective impact which has a fundamental strategy of collaboration um, with, with many, um, with participants, community, um, partners, and many different aspects. So I wanted to, to um, give you that. And one quick question, I see that this, this um, is about the term, this is for three years. I uh, heard Brandy's statement. The last one was a bit longer than expected, and that was due to COVID and um, another element with the county budget of it being extended. Um, that is not, that. those were unusual scenarios. The expectation is this will be three years. Um, and then it will be, um, again, another RFP will be live. And so that that is the cycle, so just to let you know that. Not seeing any um, quick questions, um, but I hope we've addressed a few. Um, and we'll be looking at these questions as we go along today. I think it's, it's probably I'm going to ask for that pause and that patience so I can answer them in a thoughtful and considerate way and, and make sure that we, we do that. Um, and I'm excited. I know it's a lot. It's a long document, but I hope this gives you some tools to dig in more and some uh, identify some supports um, to be able to, to work with um, some fabulous consultants on training or for your own staff, your, your communities, uh, about considering an application um, over the next few months. So unless there is anything else, we'll wrap up here. Um, be available for a few more minutes, but please feel free to um, to log off. And this will be recorded. And, uh, next week, you will see um, this on our website um, to have us as a reference point along with those responses. Thank you so much, everyone. Is is there a link to sign up for the next the next courses? or the information sessions? The, the training sessions, there sure are. They're mm -hmm. on the HSD website, the Core Investments Funding Opportunities. Uh -huh. And you can, um, you can see that if you Google Human Services Department, you will see that there's a Core Investments link. And that is where the training um, sign-up links are, are located. I know there might be a few more later down the road that we may, I'm gonna check to make sure we have them all, but I know the initial mm -hmm. ones are, are logged on there and you'll be able to start that process. And as Great. Nicole mentioned, I think there's some coming up right, right away. Great, thanks very much. Thanks for all your time today. Thank you.